When discussing facial attractiveness, people usually overanalyze the most popular facial features that define beauty, like eyes, jaw, hair, and eyebrows. And I'm also guilty of doing the same thing on my channel. I also overanalyze these features when rating people or talking about them. But there is one crucial feature that's not discussed as much as it should. And it plays just as crucial role as the eyes and jaw when it comes to importance level. And that's being your maxilla. Yes, a lacking maxilla can hurt your looks a lot. This is why I decided to discuss it today on my channel. Since I think that I never talked about it in details before. This video, like many others, will be split into two main parts. What is the maxilla and what makes an attractive maxilla? If you want to support the channel and get your face evaluated by me with personalized look maxing advice, link will be down in the description. Without further ado, let's get this video started. So what is the maxilla then? Well, maxilla, the upper jaw, is the second largest bone in the skull after the lower jaw. This is a paired bone. The right and left maxilla form the position of the entire upper jaw. Maxilla are the central bone that protects the cotton of the skull from injury. Their meaning is similar to the front of a motorcycle helmet protecting the head. Maxilla acts as a kind of airbag that prevents skull injury to the front and side. So now that we know what a maxilla is, let's move on to the next part. If we analyze the faces of attractive people, then we can notice one pattern. They all have a horizontally developed face, or rather a wide locates forward upper jaw, or the so-called maxilla, which is the key to achieving beauty. The upper jaw, maxilla, greatly affects the attractiveness of your face. It closely goes up to the eye sockets, and it goes quite deep into the skull. The size, shape, and location of maxilla plays a big role in the positioning of your nose, eyes, palate, upper teeth, and even your lower jaw. When you realize the great importance of this bone, so-called maxilla, you begin to realize how stupid is that some people only care about aligning the dentition. If you have a severe malocclusion, eyes of different sizes, a deviated nasal septum, this is all a consequence of the displacement of the maxilla. Looking at the following photos, we can see what effect the maxilla has on the position of the cheekbones, eyes, and nose. Since the maxilla goes up to the lower part of the eye sockets, then being in an elevated forward position, they literally support the eyeballs. This is why with a horizontally developed face, the eyes look more attractive and lively, and the skin under them is taut and smoothed. At the same time, a vertically developed face with flat, extended downward maxilla makes the eyes sunken and tired. In addition, the pushed back maxilla blocks the anterior and lower jaw extension, often causing crowding around the canines and the lower arc. And the lower jaw pushed back is always an attractive sagging chin. When the maxilla is moved forward and upward, it makes the face extremely attractive. Due to the raised maxilla, the distance between their upper lip and their nose is small, which results in an attractive chin to filter ratio. Their cheekbones are high, which makes the face developed forward three-dimensional. This explains the unsuccessful effect of face lips with stretched lips in some people. Since the skin and soft tissue of the face cover the structure of the facial bones like a canvas 3D frame, no matter how hard the plastic surgeon tries, he can create his art only within the given frame, which in people with vertically developed elongated maxilla is flattened, and it is not three-dimensional like in models. Now let's talk a bit about facial dystrophy and how it's related to the maxilla. The problem of many modern people is facial dystrophy, which undoubtedly can be the result of a birth trauma due to non-physiological childbirth, or even an unsuccessful prenatal presentation of the fetus in the womb. But, as study shows, most often the dystrophy of the upper jaw develops in childhood and adolescence. For example, in the photo above, we can see the horizontally developed short and wide face of a 10-year-old boy, who by the time he is 17 has a flattening and extension of the maxilla downward, with the inevitable backward movement of the lower jaw. Why is this happening? Proper tongue position and physiologically correct swallowing are critical for maxilla development and are established in infancy. Moreover, breastfeeding, or lack thereof, is key in this process. The fact is that sucking is the very first and most important reflex of survival, which is unconditioned, because no one teaches a child this. Five pairs of cranial nerves are responsible for the sucking reflex, and sucking milk from a mother's breast is very difficult job for the entire oral apparatus. Nevertheless, it is she who lays the foundation for the correct position of the tongue and the development of the adult type of swallowing. I will upload a video soon talking about what can be done to improve the maxilla, natural and surgical combined. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section. 
that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it a like and subscribe will be highly appreciated and like usual catch you guys in the next one